This is the survival analysis video of non-parametric models. Consider the typical figure one for a manuscript describing a randomized trial. It contains Kaplan-Meier plots for the two study groups and has a p-value attached to it. The p-value is generated by a log rank test. This log rank test turns out to be a non-parametric test. It's also a special case of the Cox model. Accordingly, I'll spend a bit of time illustrating the logic of the log rank test because it should also help provide insight into how the Cox model works. The log rank test is more or less the only non-parametric test I'll discuss under survival analysis. Its primary weakness is that it doesn't generalize. The log rank test is very closely related to the Mantel-Hansel test used in meta-analysis. This picture illustrates the flow of logic. On the left are the outcome data for two, from two randomized trials. This is a perfect application of meta-analysis, since the estimates of effect, namely the risk ratios, are similar, even though the outcome rates in the control groups differ. The analysis would begin with the test for interaction, which would verify that the risk ratios of 2.0 and 2.4 are statistically similar. It would then create a summary measure. This is the last row of the rightmost portion of the figure, that it's a weighted average of the 2.0 and the 2.4. In meta-analysis, the summary measure is weighted by precision. For example, if the second study was much larger than the first, the summary measure would be nearer to 2.4 than to 2.0. With similar sample sizes in the example, the precision of the estimate should be similar, and the summary measure is a risk ratio of 2.2. As drawn, the summary measure is statistically significant, since its confidence interval doesn't contain one, even though neither of the individual studies is large enough to declare st significance. Since the event rate is small, the risk ratio is similar to the odds ratio, so the version of the Mantel-Hensel test that uses odds ratio would give similar results to the version that uses risk ratios. To summarize thus far, the strata in this example are the study groups. The, the Mantel-Hensel test makes the most sense when the magnitude of the intervention effect is similar across strata which is the same as saying there's no interaction between strata and group. Since one of the possible outcome measures is an odds ratio, we could have fit a logistic regression model and made the interaction of this model one of its terms. The summary measure is a weighted average of the stratum-specific odds ratios, and it's exactly what you get if you fit a logistic regression model with stratum and group as its predictors. This slide contains a more detailed description of the algorithm for the test, and it's put in traditional chi-squared form rather than logistic regression form. I'd like to particularly highlight the second bullet point, namely that there are multiple options for defining the strata. Here's the key idea for applying the log rank test to survival analysis. The strata for a, for a, for a Mantel-Hensel test can also consist of risk sets defined by the, by the time of each death. Here's an illustration of a trial that starts with 100 intervention patients and 100 controls. At the time of the first death, the risk set is 200 patients, labeled as stratum 1. The death occurs in the intervention group. At the time of the next, of the next death, stratum 2 now has 100 control patients at risk, but only 99 intervention patients because of the previous death. The analysis proceeds as before. Censoring isn't illustrated here, but it's dealt with as in the Kaplan-Meier curves. In other words, keep each center, censored patient in the appropriate risk set so long as they're followed, but drop them from the risk sets at the point that they're censored. Even though there might be as few as one event per stratum, the long rate test works just fine. These analyses could, if desired, take place within the context of logistic regression. Let's go back to the meta-analysis example for a moment. There we assume that the impact of the intervention was the same from study to study. The log rank test makes a similar assumption, namely that the impact of the intervention is the same regardless of strata. Equivalently, that this impact is the same o over time. For example, if the intervention cuts the risk of death by half in the early part of follow-up, the log rank test is implicitly assuming it will also cut that risk by half in the later period. This is called the proportional hazards assumption. For now, we won't worry about how to test the assumption. Another note. A few minutes thought should convince you that the results depend only on the relative times of death, not their absolute times. For the previous example, the first death occurred in the intervention group at 10 days. 
you get the same result if the first death occurred at two days, so long as it was in the intervention group. The reason is that all the death times are being used for is to define the composition of the risk sets for each of the strata. Finally, I'd like to illustrate something that combines two points. The first point is a reminder that the long rec test can be implemented as logistic regression. This is strictly true and doesn't require artistic license. Also, the log rank test is a special case of the Cox model with a single categorical predictor. This is also strictly true and doesn't require license. Combining these two ideas, it turns out that fitting a Cox survival model with multiple predictors involves making risk sets at the time of each death. That's literally true. Next, you fit logistic regressions, not with a single predictor, as was the case for a log rank test, but instead with as many predictors as you want also literally true. Finally, just like you combine the risk ratios for the two studies in the meta-analysis example, you combine the results of all these logistic regressions into a single set of parameter estimates. This isn't literally true, but is consistent with what's fundamentally going on, and thus is a helpful way of looking at things. Back to the long run test. For a single predictor, there's an alternative test, something called a Wilcoxon test. This isn't the same Wilcoxon test that you've used as an alternative to the t-test. The structure of the analysis is the same. The only difference is how the stratum-specific results are weighted. Because of its close connection with the Cox model, in the medical literature, the log rank test is more common than the Wilcoxon test.